Hello geometry students. Welcome to your lesson for section 8-4, Angles of Elevation and Depression with Missy McCarthy, Oak Miss High School math teacher. In this lesson, we're going to use what we learned about trig and we're going to learn new terms, angles of elevation and angles of depression, and we're going to use those to solve problems. So first, we got to know what an angle of elevation is. So we look here at this drawing, you'll see that the person riding the bike is looking from the horizontal up to the top of the tree. So if a person looks from the horizontal to a point above the horizontal, they formed an angle of elevation. So the angle theta that you see there in the drawing is angle of elevation because this is our horizontal and then they're looking up to a point above the horizontal. Similarly, an angle of depression is looking from the horizontal, so this guy here, from the horizontal, looking down to the person riding the bike, so looking from that person, um, or looking from the horizontal down to the a point below the horizontal, and then that forms an angle that we're calling alpha. Alpha is just an arbitrary name, but alpha would be considered an angle of depression because it's looking from the horizontal down. So if we look at this problem here, it says Ben is on the diving board at the neighborhood pool, Jenna is in the pool, and the lifeguard sits at her station on the opposite side of the pool. Can we classify these angles as angles of elevation or depression? Let's see. So the first one, angle one, is the lifeguard looking from the horizontal down at Ben on the diving board. So that would be an angle of depression. Wow, that's pretty bad. Not sure what's causing that. The second one, angle two, is Ben on the diving board looking up to the lifeguard. So that would be an angle of elevation. The third angle, angle three, is Ben on the um, looking from the horizon down to Jenna in the pool. So that would be an angle of depression. And then the final one, angle four, is Jen in the pool looking up to Ben on the diving board. So that would be an angle of elevation. So there we have it. Now let's try to solve this problem using angles of elevation and depression. It says the Seattle Space Needle casts a 67 uh, meter shadow. If the angle of elevation from the tip of the shadow to the top of the Space Needle is 70 degrees, then how tall is the space needle? So we're gonna use our trig functions if we can get a nice drawing here. So we've got the space needle and it is 67 meters tall. Okay, it casts a shadow that is, oh no, it casts a shadow that's 67 meters. We're trying to find the height, so I'm gonna call that H and then the shadow is 67 meters. The angle of elevation from the tip of the shadow up to the space needle is 70. So if we use tangent because opposite 70 is H and adjacent to 70 is 67, we should be able to find the height of the space needle. So we would do the tangent, and this is nuts, the tangent of 70 degrees equals H over 67. If we multiply both sides by 67, H is equal to 67 times the tan of 70. And so H is approximately, it says around to the nearest meter. So I'm just gonna put this in a calculator. 67 times the tangent of 70. And it looks like the space needle is 184 meters tall. 184 meters approximately. Okay, so that was using angle of elevation. Here in this problem, we've got an ice climber that's standing on the edge of the crevice that is 115 feet wide. So the angle of depression from where she's standing is down uh, 52 degrees to the um, side that's opposite her. How deep is it? So let's see, she's, oops, we need a, we need a pen, don't we? Okay, so let's get our pen here. And we've got somebody standing here. There is an opening that's 115 feet wide. 
and then it looks like there's another place here. Now the angle of depression from the horizontal down there is this angle right here is 52 degrees. So if we do 90 minus 52, we get that this angle here is 38 degrees, and we want to find out how deep it is, D. So with this 38 degrees, I've got opposite and I've got hypot or I've got adjacent, so I'm going to use tangent. So the tangent of 38 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is 115, over the adjacent, which is D. So I multiply both sides by D, I get D tangent of 38 equals 115, and then divide both sides by tangent of 38, D is equal to 115 divided by the tan of 38. So on my calculator I'm doing 115 divided by the tangent of 38, and we get the depth D, and it says round to the nearest foot, is approximately 147 feet. Okay, one more problem. All right, now we've got an observer. Um, oops, I said there was one more. There we go. We got an observer in a lighthouse that's 67 feet above the water. The observer is going to spot two boats. The boat that's closest has an angle of depression of 48 degrees, and the boat that is further away has an angle of depression of 22 degrees. So we've got to find the distance between the two boats. So what's that drawing look like? Well, the person's in the lighthouse, and from an angle of depression down, so it, that angle to the boat that's closest is 48 degrees. So there's boat one. Then the person spots another boat. So I'm going to change the ink color so we can distinguish here. That angle of depression is 22 degrees. Okay, so the first one, the blue one, is this big angle here. That's the 48 degrees, and then the other one is 22. So they're looking out to the second boat there. Okay, so we really have two right triangles. We have this one right triangle with boat one, and we have the other right triangle with boat two. If we can find this distance to boat one and then this distance to boat two and subtract them, then we have the distance between the boats. So in the first right triangle to boat one, this is a right angle, and we know that this is 69. Okay, so if the angle of depression to that boat is 48, then this angle in here has to be 42 degrees. So we're looking for X. So opposite and adjacent again, so the tangent of 42, I'm about ready to throw this thing out the window, you guys. The tangent of 42 equals X over 69. So you multiply both sides by 69 and we get X is approximately 69 times the tangent of 42. We get 62, approximately 62 feet. Good Lord. Okay, now for the other triangle, we're actually looking at this triangle here. Okay, and if this is 22, then we do 90 minus 22, and we get this angle right in here has to be 68. Okay, so then we're going to do opposite is, I'm going to call it y this time, tangent of y, I'm sorry, tangent of 68 equals y over 69. So tangent of 68 is equal to y over 69, and then we get y is 69 tan 68. I'm not going to erase anymore, you guys can see what it, hear what I'm saying, tan 68. So if we do that, we get y is 171 feet, approximately. So now if we want to find the distance between the two boats, we just take the 171 and subtract the other one, which was, what did that one turn out to be? Uh, 62. 
And 161 minus 62 means the distance between the boats is 109 feet. Okay. So rewatch any parts of the video, bring questions to class, or write them in YouTube. And no lesson quiz. We're going to do something a little bit different with that in class tomorrow. See you then.